we can't have an oyster episode without having them on the half shell. Cold, clean, and definitely fresh. On Instagram, Lauren says that these are her most favorite ever, and Michaela says she can't have them without caviar. I like your style, Michaela, and Lauren, let's see what you're talking about. Everybody, welcome to Bourbon House. Welcome. Great to see you again. Great to see you. We're so excited to be here, Bourbon I'm House. So glad you're here at Bourbon House. Right at the foot of Bourbon Street. I'm not a bourbon drinker. I have a feeling you might be. It goes way back generations. My dad really wanted to do American, calling the, the restaurant an, uh, an American restaurant, as opposed to saying we were French, sure, Italian. And so years ago, he would say, drink bourbon, it's American. So when we opened this restaurant up, we really were a seafood restaurant. But we wanted, we're on Bourbon Street. We said, let's, if we're gonna have a whiskey, let's feature one. Wow. And that's when we decided to do bourbon. Well, they're, um, the knobs are NOBS, right? So right. New Orleans Bourbon Society, is that? That's, so a group of uh, the knobs members are trying to become what we call master tasters. Mm. And so we have this past booklet and there are 60 bourbons in there. And as you try, you get a stamp. And when you've completed that book, you get to go up on the wall wow. as one of our master wow, tasters. Oh, very cool. Which, uh, that's a commitment. Uh, you know, and a deep commitment. Close yeah. to 50 people have reached that. So there's something about bourbon. Yeah. And it's magical. Well, with the bourbon, you have some excellent oysters. Right. So, should we get to shucking? Always. <laughs> Always. That's a great idea. We're here with Mr. Ricky Lee. How long have you been chucking oysters? Uh, over 20 years. First of all, Ricky's a rock star. Yes, he uh, is. <laughs> several years back, the Masters Golf Tournament wanted to put in a new restaurant for the tournament, mm -hmm. and they wanted to do an oyster bar. So of all the people that chuck oysters, this man was asked to go shuck oysters at that two week long. How many oysters did you shuck there? Oh. Five to 10,000 oysters. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a lot of Ooh. shucking going on. It is a lot of shucking. Do you eat oysters yourself? I'm more of a texture guy or whatever like that, but That's actually I'm, a just good a, thing. I'm just a shucker, not the sucker. <laughs> but recently, uh, we've started doing another style of an oyster called, it's, you know, you have on bottom, and we started doing off bottom harvesting. This is a bag of the traditional oysters mm -hmm. that we're looking at here that come off the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then recently, a handful of people started where you put the sealant in a in a crate okay. and it's suspended between two anchors mm -hmm. but it floats about 17 inches from the top of the surface. Versus the gulf that's all the way on the bottom. Right. Exactly. Okay, wow. These are select, they're hand done, they're, these are very clean. I mean, mm -hmm. and they really have a great flavor. And Bourbon House has premium um, oysters select here, these here, and your regular gulf oysters. Right, we, we offer both. Great, can we shuck a couple? That's where the bad mother shucker comes in. <laughs> so what's the key to shucking? So I know obviously they're a good knife, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, Let's start off with. Exactly. Yep. What you do is you, we look for the mouth, what we call the mouth of the oyster. Okay. So what you do is you just get the knife in there, penetrate a little bit once you feel it in. But you just get it up and this is where the technique comes in at. Because it's connected to both shells. Yeah, so you have to wiggle it around, cut, flip. There it is. I see what you mean by clean. It's a little bit brighter, a little mm -hmm. bit lighter. What, you're tapping it to? Uh, see how the, the different sounds are there? For us, it's suckers. Oh, wow. That's empty. That's empty. You don't need to hear the different sounds? I do, I do. So with us, we don't need to de deal with that. We go to the, uh, the one that sounds like something. No one has else yeah. that size. The size oh, is yes. just, I mean, that, yes. that's the thing. It's time to taste. It's time right, to let's, <laughs> let's try the, the traditional. Okay, got it. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're gonna just. Oh do no it no up. no! I no. Oh. Mm. Man, right, good. Going west. Wow. Mmm. Thank you. Um. Boy, a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor. You know, really a little fresher, like lighter. It has a lighter um, taste to it. It's, oh, I it's, say so clean. Yeah, it's just clean. 
Well, that is a great start. I can't wait to uh, dig in a little bit more. I'm going to go talk to some customers, and then I'll come back to the bar, and we sit down and eat some more. I can't eat two oysters. <laughs> that ain't going to work. So Sacrilege. you better go talk to the customers quick. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get way ahead of you. Sounds good. All right. We love the oysters. Oh, no, I'm so glad. Wow. doesn't eat oysters. That's so awesome. Good for you. Look at Excellent. that. What's champagne oysters? Champagne and oysters. So oh, very good. Good. Um, I'm thinking of Orin. Amazing. <laughs> well, I haven't dug in yet, but okay. I can speak from experience. Yeah. They're always delicious, perfectly briny, and go down with ease. Not much to We had the oysters. the oysters. Oh, cool. Yeah, Great. They were good. Two thumbs up. Listen, they had a little crab on them, a little mm. buttery, and they went down smooth. Awesome. I suggest good. that you get them. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Cheers to all the oyster farmers. Yes, indeed. And all that hard work to make this delicious, delicious Louisiana seafood. God, what a gift they give us. Truly. Jeez. So we have all of our um, sauces that go with it. So I know our standard cocktail sauce, horseradish. What's you got here? Mignonette. Mignonette. You know, you have traditional, so much traditions in New Orleans. And certainly with oyster bars, it was all traditional things like cocktail sauce. Right. But in the old world, they use this mignonette. Mm -hmm. It's basically shallots and vinegar. Because those oysters are so briny, mm -hmm. it kind of cuts it a little bit. Sure. And we just wanted to give an alternative to a cocktail sauce. Sure. How do you put your sauces on? Everyone does it differently. Well, the first thing I do is I try a plain, mm -hmm. just natural. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, most of the time, if they're good, I just eat them plain. Yeah. You know, if they're not as salty, I mean, these are, they can change every day. But I think a lot of times what you do is you can put a, a drop of hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. You know, on top of an oyster. The other alternative is to squeeze a little lemon. I think great That's nice. chefs, they know how to develop layers of flavors. So this is our local caviar, which is oh, wow. crazy. <gasps> mm. Mm. Oh wow, that is lovely. Oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That goes perfect. So that's a good way to spend an afternoon. <laughs> I think we're doing very bottle good. Of, <laughs> bottle of champagne, some oysters, some caviar. Not only is this good food, but you're doing uh, good things and working for to support good people with the uh, recycling of the oysters. Can you talk about the program that you guys have? It was a handful of years ago when I was driving down to, to Shell Beach and there was this huge mound of limestone rocks mm. so they could take it out to rebuild oyster beds. We're mm. trying to relocate oyster beds. I'm like, there's no limestone anywhere around here. Mm. How much is it costing us to buy it, to get it here? Mm. You know, when all of our oyster shells go to a landfill, yeah. it makes no sense. Right. So we started working on the concept of recycling our oyster shells. This oyster bar has done over 600 tons. Wow. This is such an experience, and this is very unique and only in New Orleans. Very, very proud to be from here, as you are as well. And I think that this is a Told the reason why I love to eat and why New Orleans is so unique and so special. People ask me all, all the time, what would be my last meal? And I'm like, <laughs> it would be impossible, but I gotta say, top of some of my list is oysters. 